Hi everyone, welcome to Edupedia World. I am C. Radhika Singhal. Today we are going to start one more new topic, Forex Management. This topic is one of the most interesting topic in your financial management. Forex is an acronym for Foreign Exchange. Foreign Exchange is also, you can call it as Exchange Risk or Currency Risk. So Forex Exchange is an exchange between the home currency into foreign currency. So for us, we all are Indians. So for us, for India, any currency other than rupees is a foreign currency for us. And rupee is our home currency. So the currency where the country, where the trader or the investor belongs to is its own home currency. And any other currency other than the home currency is called as foreign currency. So for us, dollar, euro, pound, all these are foreign currencies. Now, how much amount I have to pay to buy that one unit of another currency is called as exchange rate. Let's say that today for buying one dollar, I have to pay rupees 50. So this is the exchange rate between dollar and rupees. So likewise, between different currencies, there are different exchange rate. This exchange rate could be quoted in two ways. One say, let, if I say that one dollar is equal to rupees 50, so that I get to know that how much one unit of foreign currency is equals to how many units of my home currency. So for one dollar, I have to pay rupees 50. This is called as direct quote for India. But how much my one unit of home currency is equals to how many units of foreign currency? This is called as indirect quote. So when I say rupee 1 is equals to US dollar 0 0.020. So this is an indirect quote for India. Right. Now the question is from where you can get this foreign exchange. So there are certain authorized dealers and authorized money exchanges which provide you this foreign exchange or exchange your home currency into foreign currency and foreign currency into home currency. But who are they? How they exist? So how this foreign exchange market is dealt in India, there is a foreign exchange management act which frames or which lists down the rules and regulations how this is being dealt. So as per the provisions of foreign exchange act, it the central government is responsible to make any provisions or any rules for this act and also empowers the RBI to make the regulations for the provisions which are made by the central government. Since there are so many transactions, RBI cannot handle it. So what happened? RBI created certain authorized dealers and authorized money changers to deal into it. So authorized money exchangers are only deal with exchange of money. That is either the purchase or sale of foreign currency. Authorized money changers could either be full-fledged or restricted. So restricted one are those which dealt only with the purchase of foreign currency and full-fledged authorized changes which dealt with both purchase and sale of foreign currency. So if you receive certain money or you're going outside India and you need money exchange, so you can go to the authorized money changer and get that foreign exchange. But the forex market is not that limited. There are certain other dealings also. So it's not only that you need for an exchange to travel or to stay in a hotel somewhere. There are a lot of transactions with importers, exporters. So they receive all these money in day to day transactions. There are customs which has to be dealt in. So there are certain banks and financial institutions which are being called as authorized dealers. These authorized dealers are authorized to deal in foreign exchange or with these authorized dealers are just like dealing in a any other market. There is a purchase rate, there is a sale rate. Now which rate will be more? So if you are a shopkeeper, you will purchase it at a cheap price and sell it at a premium price so that you can make a profit. Likewise, let's talk about bank because let's that's an authorized dealer. So there are two types of rates which are being quoted. One is bid rate and one is ask rate. 
so bid rate is that rate at which bank will buy from you and ask rate is that rate at which bank will sell to you let's say that if you have dollar one and you want to give that dollar one to the bank bank will pay you 50 rupees against one dollar so this is the bid rate the buying rate for bank against dollar and if you need money or you can say you need dollars against rupees so now what will happen that if a bank will buy at 50 and sell you at 50 there is any margin for the bank no so bank will sell you at premium for the same dollar one bank will require rupees 55 from your side so this selling rate is called as ask rate for the bank so this is just like a normal market bank will buy at a cheap price but sell you at a premium rate so this difference of 5 rupees between the buying rate and the selling rate is called a spread so if i have to compute the spread percentage i'll simply reduce that a percentage 55 minus 50 5 rupees is your gain this 5 divided by 55 multiplied by 100 is your spread now as per this foreign exchange management act there is also one provision that no one can keep up beyond a specified limit for an exchange with themselves. So if you are an exporter and you receive certain foreign exchange, then it's your obligation that you have to get that amount to the authorized dealer because you have to exchange that amount from an authorized dealer. So there are two types of rate. One is that when you get that immediately transfer, that is the spot rate. So let's say that if you are an importer from India and uh, you buy certain cycles from USA for dollar one thousand, let's take it that that date is first January two thousand sixteen, right? So at this rate, one dollar is equal to rupees fifty. So how much money you have to pay back to USA importer? Dollar thousand. Dollar thousand. One dollar is equal to rupees fifty. So how many rupees that you have to pay? 50,000 rupees. So this is because you need an immediate payment to the importer. This rate is the spot rate for you. Now what if that importer says that it's okay that you can make me the payment after two months. That is the importer has given you a credit period of two months. Now there are two options. That once you can wait after two months then whatever the exchange rate is there after two months so you buy it on first january on first march you have to make the payment so whatever the exchange rate is going on you can buy that price and there is also an exchange rate because ex the foreign exchange rate keeps on fluctuating it could either raise in, in comparison to the other or it could be discounted so in order to save yourself you enter into forward market hedge remember what we learned in derivatives so for that forward market hedging there is a forward exchange rate that after two months if you have to make the payment you make an agreement that how much amount has to be paid and what is the specified rate let's say that today the bank quoted that if you want thousand dollars after two months then though the spot rate is rupees 50 after two months if you want to make the payment you enter into a contract that the exchange rate rupees 52 against one dollar this rate is called as forward exchange rate correct i think this you can all easily correlate with what we learned in derivatives so when i talk about foreign exchange rate foreign exchange rate is the rate agreed upon today but what the delivery and the payment that you have to make in future date now uh, how will you decide that whether you want to enter into a forward agreement or not this is based on your assumption or based on the analysis of the market. So if you expect that in the future, the prices of your home currency will get discounted, right? So let's say that you assume that though the rate is rupees 50 against $1 in the current market, might be it rise to 53, 54, 55 and the forward market rate is rupees 52. So if you have to make the payment, that is you are an importer. So what is beneficial? If you expect that the rate will be more than 52, you will enter into the forward contract. And that expected spot rate is 
less than this forward market rate 52 let's say 51 then you will not enter into the forward contract and you will prefer that you will buy after two months and make the payment to the USA dealer but if you're an exporter and you are expecting that the expected spot rate will be more than the forward rate so forward rate is 52 so against that for example you have sold rupees thousand dollar material so after two months you might be receiving 52,000 if you enter into forward contract but in future the expected spot rate or uh, that reduces so you will not enter into forward contract and the vice versa situation will be there right so with the fluctuation in this forward market is because that one currency will be at a premium and the other currency has a discount so when I say that one dollar is equal to rupees 50 and tomorrow one dollar is equal to rupees 52 that means rupees is at discount because against the same home currency you have to pay more money of rupees so rupees at discount and dollar is at premium if I have to compute let's like say that 50 and 52 so what is the percentage of premium or discount if I have to compute then I'll reduce that forward range between the forward rate and spot rate which is 2 rupees divide by spot rate now if that forward rate is for 2 months I'll compute that what will be the per annum rate so multiply by 12 months divide by the period of forward rate let's say 2 months in our example multiply by 100 this will compute the forward premium and discount percentage now to compute this whatever this 2 rupees premium is there this is the forward premium or discount in dollar terms because this is a direct quote for India to compute this forward premium and discount in any currency it should be quoted in indirect quote terms so when dollar 1 is equal to 50 and the forward rate 6 months let's say is 52 so if I have to compute forward premium and discount on dollar then that will be 52 less 50 divide by 50 this rate is for 6 months so multiply by 12 and multiply by 100 so it's a 8% premium so since it is positive dollar is at 8% premium if I have to compute forward premium or discount in rupees then I have to convert this amount in that how much rupees equals to dollar so rupee 1 equals to 0 0.20 that is 1 divided by 50 this is the spot rate and forward rate is rupees 1 equals to 0 0.0192 to compute forward premium on discount we have to reduce forward rate less spot rate 0 0.0192 less 0 0.02 multiply by 100 this will give you minus 1.79 percent this means that rupee is at discount in the forward market now because of this X fluctuation that uh, some currency is at premium some currency strengthen and some currency weaken in the future market this creates certain types of risk contractual risk and economic risk transaction risk is because of the buying and selling so if you buy a product let's say if you do any credit purchase today one dollar equals to 50 rupees so if you buy thousand dollar material you have to pay fifty thousand and if you had made a credit purchase let's say the credit period is two months it is depends that what is the spot rate after two months so there is a risk or you can say a decline a potential change in the value of the transaction due to changes in the exchange rate so this create an a transaction exposure so if you are making any credit purchase or sales any borrowing or lending in foreign currency there is a realized exchange or foreign exchange loss or realized foreign exchange gain when the transaction is actually settled so if you are making a purchase at 50 but after the credit period ends you have to make the payment at 50 dollar rupees 52 per dollar then there is an exchange loss of rupees 2 for every one dollar payment right so the other risk is so this is because of the transactions what if you have certain subsidies outside your home currency 
Let's say that the subsidiary company is in US. Fluctuation of foreign currency also creates three types of risk. Because that certain dis foreign exchange get at weakens or strengthen in the future market, it cannot be predicted. These created this fluctuation of foreign exchange creates three types of foreign risk exposure. One is translation of accounting exposure. Second, transaction of contractual exposure. And third is operating on economic exposure. Let's say that you are an Indian importer and you buy it from USA. Any material, any stock. At present, $1 is equal to rupees 50. In future, that one rupees could either be forty rupees forty five. So let's say that after three months of the credit period, it is rupees forty five. So you bought dollar thousand rupees of material. So as of now, if you're making the payment, you have to pay rupees fifty thousand, right? So what's the entry that will pass in books when you buy that stock? You will say. Stock account debit fifty thousand to USA vendor account fifty thousand. After three months, when you actually have to make the payment, one dollar is equal to rupees forty five. So how much payment you have to make forty five thousand, but the vendor account is credited by fifty thousand. So the difference between this fifty thousand forty five thousand is your foreign exchange gain. So you'll pass an entry, vendor account, USA vendor account, debit with 50,000, to bank account 45,000, and the difference 5,000 will be credited to foreign exchange gain account. So there is, this is a realized gain, which you have actually possessed, because though you have booked the expense of 50,000, but the actual expense stands at 45,000. Likewise, it's the same situation when that one dollar is equals to stand as rupees 52. In that scenario, you will book a 2000 rupees loss, foreign exchange lost. Now, this is about credit purchases and sales, borrowing and lending, or denomination when the denomination is a foreign currency. This created a transaction exposure. Now, let's say there's a holding company in USA and it has a subsidiary in India. So, Indian. A, a, a company will make all the transaction in rupees and the USA the holding company will make the books in dollar at the year end USA company will consolidate Indian books right so USA company will have to convert this Indian amount into US dollar now let's say that they make the, all the transactions when whatever the currency is there but as an year end date that will be converted at the end rate that is year end rate now this translation could either be create a foreign gain or it could create a foreign exchange loss for the holding company so because of that consolidation there is an unrealized foreign exchange and gain into the books so this is only for the accounting purpose in actual there is no loss in actual there is no such transaction it's only for the accounting purposes that the USA holding company is consolidating the Indian subsidiary company with its books. So this is called as translation exposure. The third is the economic exposure. So economic exposure risk is because due to this fluctuation in the foreign exchange rate, this fluctuation could affect the value of a firm. How? Because the value of a firm is determined by a proc by quantifying the value of the future cash flows which is being discounted at an appropriate rate of discount so if there is any flush fluctuation the same future cash flows are being discounted or could be computed so to explain this let's say that let's take that same example that there is an US holding company and an Indian subsidiary company the Indian subsidiary company has a book profit of rupees 1 lakh on year end date, the exchange rate is one dollar is equal to rupees fifty. When the US company is actually consolidating the books of its subsidiary company, 
the rate actually changes and now one dollar is equal to rupees fifty two. So though the profit is one lakh divided by fifty dollars, that is two thousand dollars, which is to be consolidated in U.S. subsidiary books, but because of this fluctuation or the foreign exchange risk, the profit in dollar terms has reduced. So there is no as such loss. The real there is no real money loss. The profit is still rupees one lakh, but because of the fluctuation, when I'm consolidating the books of U.S. and Indian company, the profit of the Indian subsidiary has fallen down. This is the economic exposure. So for computing this economic exposure, there are very detailed analysis of the effects of the exchange rate on the future cash flows as being made by the companies to compute the economic exposure of the company. That's all for today. Thank you so much. Have a great day and keep smiling.